Greetings, Facebook friends and family. Today, I was reflecting a little bit on some of the classes that I took when I was doing my doctorate in pastoral care and counseling. I took a lot of psychology classes, and one of the things that was most humbling, um, and perhaps one of the more effective things that my professor said was that in the room, we're only, each one of us, doctor of ministry students, PhD students, each one of us was only one good crisis away from becoming a psychological mess, <laughs> from becoming ill with whatever thing we might have a bent toward. So if we worry a lot, we might be one good crisis away from being pushed into an, a generalized anxiety disorder. If you're a little bit shy around people, you might be one good crisis away from agoraphobia. If you like things that are orderly, you might be one good crisis away from obsessive compulsive disorder. And we all had to stop and we all had to think about that. Because sometimes we think that mental illness is for the other people and, and not for most of us. But one of the things that I've really found true uh, the more I get to know people is just like everything else, our, our weight or our blood pressure, how we are in our mental health really depends on how well we take care of ourselves. So if you've been diagnosed with different mental health disorders, now is not the time to stop your medication. Now is not the time uh, to just kind of get in with whatever the crowd is doing. Now is the time to take especially good care of yourself because it's in these crisis moments that every individual effort that we have towards having good mental health is going to help not just you but the collective all of us in community as we go together down this path we don't know really what the next day is, can hold but we do know that in the now the actions that we take are extremely important so I don't know what you're kind of prone toward in your own mental health, uh, whether you're prone to worry or sadness or anxiety uh, or grief or hyperactivity, but whatever it is, um, I would encourage you to take note of who you are, thinking of your past behaviors, your present behaviors, but also who you want to be. Now is the time where if every single person thought about what is the best that I can be and strove for that, it would really help all of us. Because when things like this happen, uh, we can get really stressed out. And if we all get stressed out at the same time and, and nobody's focusing on their mental health and on their spiritual health, um, or if very limited numbers of folks are doing that, then it affects the community consciousness. So some of the ways we're already seeing that is in this sort of panic buying at the grocery stores. This is not new. This happens every time that there is a situation where we've got an epidemic or a pandemic. It's happened historically time after time. We, whether you're talking about the bubonic plague or the Spanish flu, um, all of those historically have these patterns. So as people of faith, our job is to work on ourselves, get our own hearts right with God and right with other people, and then to work on our capacity to trust and to give. We wanna trust God that God will lead us through this, but we wanna to give too. We wanna to be able to continue to give to our neighbors, to give to our friends, to give to our family. Um, we may have to get real creative about how to do that. And I've been having conversations with people on how to be creative in this moment of time so that we can continue to help people without endangering them so that we can continue to model what it means uh, to respect the quarantine so that we save lives while at the same time doing things in creative ways to help other people sometimes you're not the one who needs to do the hands-on things sometimes you're the one who needs to give to a particular institution uh, so that they can do the hands-on things and that they have support from each of us so that they have the resources to do that. So 
um, another conversation that I had recently was with uh, another friend who really, really wanted to do something, but she didn't really know what was going on in her community, what the people who have been trained to help community uh, to continue to thrive already were doing. So even if you think you have a good idea, I would super encourage you to take a minute and to go to your community's webpage. We have several in Inyo and Mono County um, of things that people are doing. The, the links to those were in the paper and whatnot, uh, but you can Google it and see what's happening with COVID response in Inyo County and Mono County. And I bet even if you're somewhere else right now, if you look, there are good and qualified people, your neighbors and friends, who are, have already been spending countless hours trying to figure out how to use the resources that they have and the resources that they want to organize the community around a response. So rather than just doing your own thing, I would highly encourage you, if you're trying to help the community, to do things to help the response teams that are already being put in place. You don't have to recreate the wheel. You don't have to do vigilante helping or vigilante justice. You can help those who are already there. They're your neighbors, they're your friends, they're people that work at the hospital, they're people that work at the grocery store, they're people that are running things. Already our communities everywhere are inundated with people who have spent years trying to figure out how to help people in the best ways and now they're just leveling up to how to work together in this moment to do it even better. I'm asking you to have a little faith in God that God is working through you and through others and to trust some of those systems um, so that you can help empower them to do the work that they've been called to do. We each have a call to play. We each have a call, a mission, a ministry. My question for you is, how do you get a hold of yourself, know yourself well enough to know what you can and cannot do, stay in your lane, and how can you help others who are also doing things to be able to have the resources, uh, the prayer cover, and the extra help to be able to do it even better? These are my challenges to myself, and these are my challenges to us all as we go into this next week. I hope that you will join us online tomorrow at 930 here on this channel uh, for worship. We've got a lot of cool things planned for you. I hope you enjoy it, and we're really looking forward to seeing you all there. Take care. Have a great rest of your Saturday. God bless.